Hey there, this is Felix from Gold Amber Vintage Watches and in today's video we want to talk about one of Omega's least remembered and most misunderstood watches, the Chronostat. A total of 185,000 pieces were produced and yet it had become very difficult to lay your hands on an original piece. In today's video we want to talk about five main topics. We want to talk about its function, its history, the design, the movements, and at least uh, we want to share some buying tips to get your perfect single pusher chronograph. So let's check the info and get into today's video. At the time of its release, it was considered as an expensive luxury watch. But nowadays, the Chronostab is regarded as one of the best bargains among vintage watch collectors. Our today's piece with the reference 145009 is from 1969 and gives us a little bit the feeling of a time capsule. The 1960s were a decade when the design changed from simple and elegant to eye-catching, futuristic, contemporary for the first time. The experimentalism of the 1960s and 70s, watches went beyond crazy colors and unexpected geometry. The funkiness sometimes extended even to mechanics and functionality. This was an era that saw crazy technology like the microwave or satellite television enter homes after all. And as a result, we see this new thinking behind design and concepts reflected in everything from lava lamps, cars to guitars and of course watches. The Omega Chronostab is no exception. It was a rather curiously complicated watch, manufactured by Omega from 1966 to 74 in two main lines. Firstly, there were the Chronostab that were sold under the name Seamaster and that were cased in larger, more complex stainless steel cases with 41mm with vibrant, multicolored dials. These were followed by the slightly smaller Chronostabs in 35mm, as you can see it on our piece, Omega simply signed it with the word Genève on the dial and it was a low price chronograph watch for younger, less affluent buyers. While the variations of the watch within the two main lines might look different upon first glance, it is important to know that under the hood they both made use of the same movements. Omega's manually wound caliber 865 and caliber 920. Unlike conventional chronographs that record seconds, minutes and hours with three or two subdials, the Chronostab was designed to be used for short interval timing. Less than one minute with a central hand for seconds and a single pusher. So let's talk about how to use this chronograph. It really is quite easy. To start the orange second hand, you only have to press the pusher once. To stop the stopwatch hand, you only have to press it again and keep it pressed to stop the process and read the time. If you release the pusher, the second hand fly back to zero and is ready for a new counting process. And as you can see, there is no minute subdial. So if you want to measure something for more than 60 seconds, you have to count the minutes yourself. To be honest, the Chronostab is not the most functional uh, chronograph ever made, but at least it is fun to use. Despite the limitations, some people found a good use for the specialized stopwatch. Doctors and nurses use the timer to take patients' pulses and engineers and technicians working with product lines found the feature to be handy. Even though the Chronostab only features one measurement function, it was selected as the official Omega timer at the Pan American Games in Winnipeg and in 1968 Olympic Games in Mexico. Available in olive green, red, white and blue, the Mexico Olympics versions of the watch use the caliber 920 movement with a date function and including dial matching leather straps. None of this making the Chronostab a groundbreaking achievement, but it does make it a fascinating piece of forgotten horology for collectors looking for something special in their collection. Omega released seven different references with two different movements over the lifespan of eight years. Three references with the 865, and four references with the 920 movement. And in 1970, 
Omega listed a chronostat model made specifically for the Italian market. This variation had a roundish UFO case and used the same integrated strap system. Another interesting fact is, if you Google about the Kronostab, you will find some old advertisements where the Kronostab was born uh, under the wrist. It is a reference 145010. Omega marked this version as a driver model. Please note, driver, not diver. It was designed to be worn under the wrist instead of the normal position above the wrist. The thinking was that whilst driving with your hand in the 1445 position, you could read the time without removing your hands from the steering wheel. Next, let's check the design. Despite a clean dial with only three hands, its general sportiness and single pusher, protruding from the case side, mark it as more than your typical time-only watch. This elegant tonneau form and deeply polished beveling allow the watch to work comfortably and discreetly on the wrist. The top of the case displays a brushed sunburst surface seen in many examples from the late 60s and 70s and seldom seen today. With different case sizes and shapes ranging from 35mm to 41mm, the sheer variety available makes Chronostabs fun vintage shopping. Some feature tarimeter scales and others have 60 count or 24 hour markers as well as different dial colors or other offbeat design elements. In the Seamaster collection, you can find larger case sizes, as well as uh, rotating inner bezels operated by a 10 o'clock crown, which can be used to add measurements of minutes to your chronograph seconds timing. The Tonneau stainless steel case of our piece features a matte gray dial and orange second hand just reminded us of the color scheme of a space shuttle. The dial demonstrates sporting intentions and the shape the ring with chronograph seconds, allowing the user to measure the speed of a traveling object over a fixed distance. It is faced with applied polished steel indexes, while Omega Kronstab and Genève are printed in white at the 12 and 6 o'clock respectively. The whole dial is kind of clean and uncluttered and make telling time much easier. The case is a perfect size for a vintage sports watch, coming in at 35mm and about 10mm thick. The tonneau case, however, makes it work larger and sits perfectly on the wrist while the thin sleekness of the case allows it to fit perfectly on the cuff. The case uses brushing on the front and polishing on the bevels to give it this matte robotic look when it hits the light. Beneath the original raised crystal with an Omega hallmark etched in the center, the luminous baton hands are white, offering maximum legibility with an orange chronograph second hand matching the color of the Omega logo on the dial. Like I told you before, there are two movements that has been used in this watch series, the 865 and the 920. Simply said, the 920 has a date and the 865 doesn't, and both movements are manual white. The 865 movement was introduced in 1966 and 124,000 pieces were made. The 920 movement was introduced two years later in 1968 and 61,000 pieces were made. Both of these movements were only ever used in chrono stop watches. They both have 17 joules and one with 21,600 beats per hour. So it would appear that 185,000 pieces were made in total. Despite the low price back in the day, the chrono stop was a premium model. The watch's movement seemed simple, but it was a high-accurate, high-beat, high-quality engine, essentially a simple version of the movement that powered the Speedmaster. If you're searching for an Omega Chronostop, try to find a piece that is near or in mint condition. As most models are worn for having been used in rugged or trying conditions, it is difficult to find one without visible signs of wear and tear. There are four things to consider. First, and try to find a piece with an original crystal with a flat top, beveled edges and almost always a tiny Omega sign at its center. The crystals used for repair are frequently domed and that don't look correct for this model. Second, check the dial carefully. The tritium loom plots at each five minute marker have a habit of pulling away from the dial surface. If your watch technician has surveyed and cleaned the, the watch, that's fine. Otherwise, the loom can find its way into the movement. Third, the movement should also bear the words Omega Swiss 17 jewels on its pink gold bridge to indicate authenticity. 
And finally, check the case. The upper sloping top of its surface should be brushed, which was a standard feature. Many chrome stubs have been polished to remove scratches and lost their brushed finish. So that's all for today. We hope you enjoyed today's video and collect some knowledge you haven't heard before. And yeah, if you have any question, que questions, comment down below. We will answer all your questions and yeah, hope to see you in our next video.